Hey guys, these are instructions for anyone who's planning on taking the test at the testing center, whether you have accommodations or if you're uh, taking a live online class. For this video, I'm using a 1033 intermediate algebra class as a sample, but the instructions are the same for whether you're taking intermediate algebra or college algebra, whether it's live online or you have accommodations. So please make sure you follow these correctly. Uh, on the day of the test, make sure you arrive at the testing center at least 15 minutes in advance. If you arrive late for your appointment, they're not going to give you additional time because the testing centers are gonna start getting packed as exam dates roll around. So make sure you arrive at least 15 minutes in advance. Um, when you arrive, they're going to ask you who you are, who you're taking a test for, introduce yourself, tell them that you're taking the test for me, that it's a college algebra or intermediate algebra exam. And then they'll ask you to probably put away your personal items away in a locker and lock them up then they'll tell you to go to a particular computer. So let's say go to computer five, you'll go there, you'll open up a Chrome browser, not lockdown browser, just the regular Chrome browser, and then navigate, log in, navigate to your particular course. And then this particular thing that says testing center walkthrough, you'll actually have test one here. So, uh, you know, whenever, whichever class you're taking, it might say test one at testing center, February 8th, or test one at testing center February 9th, that kind of thing. So here I'm just using this fake module as a testing center walkthrough, but this would be uh, like here, it would say test one at testing center. There will be another module that's called test one at home or test one in class. Please do not use those exams because they will have a different password and a whole different process of getting to. So make sure you're clicking on the right test so if you're taking the test at the testing center, the module will be called test one at testing center. So we click on it and then we click on this fake test one. It will say load in a new window, click, go ahead, click on it. And then at this stage, it will ask you for a passcode. This is where the testing center will remotely type in the passcode for you. So if you're in the wrong test, the passcode will not work. They will have the right passcode, they will have tested it, so please make sure that if the passcode is not working, it's probably because you clicked on the test for the in-class people. So here I'm going to type in the passcode. Again, you click begin test now. And here is where you would see a couple of things. So at the very bottom of this question pane, you see how many minutes you have remaining, so there's no need to you know, fidget around or look at anything else. You have four questions, so let's click on question one. Here again, you see a timer running down at the top of the screen. You'll notice that there's a question here, so let's say that your answer is one. I'm just doing it for the sake of showing it to you. Let's say that you needed to write one squared. You can use this keyboard icon to introduce additional math keyboards that you might need, math keys that you might need, so you can use this to indicate square, or maybe you need square root, so you can do that. So let's say I write one square, square root of four as my answer. I click submit. It's gonna say, are you sure you wanna submit this answer? You click yes. And let's say later on during the test, you realize, oh shoot, the answer should actually be 10. Uh, you cannot delete this answer because Delta Math wants to make sure you don't accidentally you know, hit your keyboard and change your answers. To change any answer, you click on unsubmit answer on this bottom right corner. Click yes, unsubmit. And then here you can type in whatever your new answer is. Click Submit Answer, click Yes again. And to move to the next question, you click on, well, Next Question. So you can travel between questions by clicking here. So here, let's say again, I just type in some stuff. Click Submit, click Yes. Next question, again, I'm just typing in some random answers here to show you what the test will feel like. Next question, and this is question four. This is the last one. Please notice that you still have 59 minutes remaining and this is how the timer will keep running. And let's say we click submit answer. This button will be grayed out. That means that you've answered all the questions. So let's say I go back and I unsubmit the answer for question three. I just wanna show you something. Um, Let's say you finished your test and you forgot that you hadn't answered question three and you want to try to submit the test. In order to submit the test, you have to click back. And here you'll notice that it says done, done, done. 
but for question three, it does not say done. In fact, in this location, once we answer question three, you'll actually see something that says end test early. So right now we don't even see it. Uh, Delta Math doesn't want to give you the option to even accidentally get out of the test. So you click on question three. And then here, let's say we type in one, submit answer. Now that we've answered all the questions, if we click back, you'll notice that it says done for all of them. And now this message or this parenthetical reference appears that says end test early. So two ways to end the test. You can either click on that button that says end test early or you can, or time expires. So once the 90 minutes for your tests are up, uh, it, you'll just get a little pop-up message on your screen that says your test is over, uh, it's been submitted. So make sure that you keep submitting answers after every question. You can't go back at the end and say, oh, I, I finished the entire test, but time ran out and I wasn't able to answer any of the questions. Make sure that you're submitting the answers as you go along. You can later go back and unsubmit and change any of the answers, but they need to be entered in as time processes. And then at the end, you can click on end test early. If you're really done, please note that if you close this browser, I mean, there shouldn't be any reason to accidentally close a browser. If you close the browser, the test is over. So please don't, you know, randomly click all over the place. Uh, in order to end the test, you can click end test early, click end early, and then test is over or time is over because you've ended the test early. At this stage, you can close all your browser windows and then get up and go up to the front. When you go to the front of the room, the testing center will have these instructions and I'm telling you this now. They will ask you to grab your phone or you should grab your phone from your locker, log into gradescope.com and then upload photos of your work before you leave the testing center. If you don't upload the work right in front of them, you get a zero for the test. I will not accept any work from students that say, well, I forgot to turn it in or, oh, I'm sorry, I left the testing center by accident. It's either submitted in front of the testing center staff or it's not. So again, that, that's where you would grab your phone, turn it on again, or you know, navigate to gradescope.com. That's where you would see you know, test one work or test two work. And that's where you would have a question that just says, take photos of your work and upload them here. Make sure that the photos are right side up, that they're not rotated. If they're rotated, you get a zero for that particular page. So please make sure that the photos are right side up and you'll have 10 minutes from the time that you submit the test and open up Gradescope to then submit the work. So the testing center submission time is what I'm gonna be paying attention to. And then I'll get feedback from the testing center as well saying, please mark the students as having uploaded their work or not. Then you should be able to leave. If you have any questions, please reach out to me well before the test. Once the test is in session or you say, well, I didn't know I had to do that, then it's too late. The rules are what they are. Please make sure that you're using the scientific calculator that is approved on the syllabus. No other calculators will be permitted. I posted a message on Slack indicating what that calculator is, but if you're not sure, or you missed the post on Slack, you can also find it on the syllabus. So this is the only one that is permitted by the testing center or in class. No other scientific or graphing calculators are permitted. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Otherwise, good luck, and I'll see you guys in class.